Welcome to SPARC, a leadership series hosted by the Office of Student Life's Buckeye Leadership Fellows Program, where we connect with university and community leaders, as well as university alumni, to hear more about their stories, principles, and knowledge for the next generation of Buckeyes. Join us as we explore leadership lessons and advice for the future. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for our SPARC Conversations. We have our first guest with us this afternoon. He is an alum of Ohio State, class of 2006. But he is also an educator, a coach, a music and sport enthusiast, a business owner, and of course, a Buckeye. So please join us in welcoming Mr. Steve King. Steve, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Making it. I cannot complain. I can't complain. Yeah. So we appreciate you taking the time to, to join us this afternoon and share a little bit more about your experiences and the lessons that you've learned, both in your professional career and in life. So we're going to go ahead and get started with you just telling us a little bit about yourself. Like, tell us where you are right now on your professional path and if there's anything exciting happening in your world. Yep. So um, so professionally, so first, first and foremost, um, I'm a husband and I'm a father of four. Um, three, three boys, uh, two 13 year olds, a five year old and a two year old diva that pretty much, uh, runs the house. So, uh, that's, that's, that's my job. <laughs> that's my real job right there. But professionally, um, I am, I'm a man of many hats. So I walk a lot of different paths. So, um, uh, I am currently an assistant principal at Gahanna Lincoln high school, um, one of the largest school districts in central Ohio. And in addition to that, I am also a uh, DJ and on-air personality here at uh, Power 107.5, 106.3, um, Radio 1 um, in Columbus. So yeah, I walk a lot of different hats and a lot of people always say, oh, how are you a principal or educator and on the radio? So, you know, I, I always look at it as the two tie into each other some way or another in terms of affecting kids or impacting kids. Um, in addition to that, um, my wife and I um, have started the educational resource center called the Greenhouse, uh, where we focus on individualized instruction, um, kind of closing the achievement gaps uh, within students in, in our community. So, um, that's that's kind of where I am professionally. I know it's uh, a plate full, but you know, the goal is to eat, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now I've had the pleasure of knowing you um, personally for like the last eight years, and so a little bit more information than than the the normal person who would uh -huh. just cross paths with you. Um, and one of our favorite things to to talk about um, with any anyone that we're interacting with or having conversations with is talking about where you're from. And I know where you're from, and I know that yeah, where you're know from is from. really <laughs> really important with really important to you. So can you talk to us a little bit about your hometown, where you're from? And then when you think about how your career and your life has evolved over the last few years, like what has it meant to think about your roots and where you're from and how has that played into your growth and development? So I'm from this big city called Akron, Ohio. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we are one of the uh, most influential, impactful cities in, this, uh, in, in the United States. You know, go up 71, you know, get off at 76 and make sure you get off at Copley Road I'm right from the west side. I'm very proud of my city. As you can see, uh, I have a LeBron uh, James uh, shirt on right now. Um, but no, seriously, like uh, the west side of Akron, that's that's where I'm from, born and raised. Um, and it's, you know, being from Akron is, has made me the person that I am. Um, if, if most people that you will meet from Akron, we have a different grind about us. We have a different mindset about us. And, and it's, it's really because of our environment, like not to try to make it off to, to like, like Akron is this, this rough and tough place, but it is a, it is a environment in which you have to have some type of grind or some type of willingness to, to want more. Um, and I feel like that being from Akron has made me, you know, the person I am as a, as a human being, as a professional, as um, an educator, um, and just want more for myself. So yes, Akron, Ohio. And, and I will say this, um, I, I was, a member of the Young Scholars Program. So that's how I got to Ohio State. Like um, I got in the Young Scholars Program in the sixth grade and I knew that was the only really path that I had out of Akron. If not, you know what I'm saying? I would have probably just did like, you know what I'm saying? The local community college or just Akron U or something like no offense to Akron U or anything like that. But it was just like, I would have stayed home um, because my mom raised six boys on her own and I was the oldest. So this was the only way that I knew I could get to college. So being a part of the Young Scholars Program gave me the opportunity to come down to Ohio State 
every summer and kind of see like what this college life was really about and and being able to actually obtain you know what i'm saying uh an opportunity to go to college and you know once you got down here it was like okay i can really do this like you know what i'm saying and yeah, so I'm just appreciative appreciative of that. That's awesome. So we're going to get into that. Um, but as LeBron said, he's just a kid from Akron, and That's so true. are you. So let's talk a little bit about this kid from Akron coming to Columbus and what your Ohio State experience looked like. So you've already talked about um, your pathway and your access to higher education was through the Young Scholars Program. Can you share a little bit more about you know how you spent your time at Ohio State and any meaningful moments while you were here on the Oval? So, so I feel like, so I, I was, I, and I, I, I'm sure that campus has changed since I left, but I was, you know, we was uh, South Campus, um, Park Hall, PH7, 7-Eleven, like, you know what I'm saying? That's what we always represented. <laughs> but uh, I feel like that was some of the best times of my life, man. I met so many people, so many different walks of life. Um, I did have an advantage of knowing some, uh, you know, students that were my age uh, through the Young Scholars Program, but also those uh, like having like some mentors or people that was before me because of the Young Scholars Program, whether they were like our, you know, camp counselors or whatever, like they kind of like showed us and helped navigate the way. But once you got down on here, you just realizing it was so many activities, so many clubs, so many walks of life that you can get involved in. It was almost overwhelming, but for me, I was a sports head. So I knew that, you know, I, I was a journalism major and I love basketball. So for me, I didn't really navigate and care too much about like, you know, you know, fraternities or sororities, all that kind of stuff like that. But I, I helped start the uh, basketball club, the club basketball team at Ohio State, uh, the Ball Stars, which is like still growing and doing amazing things. So uh, myself and Vance Marbury was a part of like uh, launching that back in 2002, 2003. Um, uh, I was also worked in the sports information department during during a lot of my time there. So that gave me great experience in terms of uh, journalism and communication. So being able to go and cover tons of sports at Ohio State, including like, you know, the national championship game, you know, all of that throughout that time in 2002 when we when we won a national championship, gymnastics, basketball, all those kind of things. And it just helped like develop those relationships. Um, but But at the end of the day, it's like, our, that seal, that block O, that it just it just rings bells like wherever you go, and and a lot of it is that connection. Like a lot of people don't understand that, but like you can meet so many people, so many different walks of life that I'm still friends with now, and we connect on so many things that you know that we never even saw so so doing at the time. So you've had a, you've had a pretty dynamic experience, and I know you just briefly mentioned working in journalism, and we were talking offline before um, about all the different paths that you've taken in your career. And I kind of just want to throw a little wrench in our in our plan this afternoon, and maybe have you talk about what that transition was like. So when you when you graduated from Ohio State, you had a career in journalism. So can you talk a little bit about um, what that transition has been like for you as you've pivoted and gone in different directions in your career? Yep. So, so for me, I honestly was super, super blessed, like, uh, to have, um, opportunity through the Knight Raider Foundation, like a scholarship that I had in addition to the Young Scholars Program to every summer where, when I was in college, I was able to do an internship at a different newspaper. So two summers in a row, I did the Akron Beacon Journal. One summer I did the Charlotte Observer. And then going into my senior year, I did the Philadelphia Daily News. So each summer, like I would move back to those cities or, or, or move to that city and do the internship. So the final year, that I did it um, after I completed my internship at Philly. They were just basically like, look, we like you. Hurry up and get done with school. We want to hire you. So I'm like, bet. Like, so I, I have, so I knew like that I had a job waiting on me upon graduation, unlike, you know, a, a good portion of college graduates that's like, what's next? I done did four or five years and I have no idea what's next. Me, like I said, thank God that I knew I had something waiting on me. So at this point, my, I was laser focused as a senior, like I'm just trying to get out of here. So I got done, moved up there to Philly. I was there for two years. Um, one of the youngest reporters on the East Coast, but I was covering, um, you know what I'm saying, second in hand covering the Phillies, the Sixers, 
um, Temple basketball, Villanova basketball, just all kind of stuff. And in Philly, I'm really getting my hands wet. Um, but then two years in, you know, here comes this, you know, birth of the digital age and people not buying as much newspapers and, you know what I'm saying? So eventually, you know, there were some cuts, some layoffs going on, but at the same time I had, I was getting ready to have my first son. So it was like, okay, do I keep and raise a family up here or do I come back home and try to, you know, focus on music and DJing and walk another career path. And, you know, I, I made a decision of what I felt was best for me. Um, at the time, I know a lot of people looked at it as like, yo, I was walking away from dream jobs and I could have went into another city or a smaller market, but I just wasn't in love with journalism no more because it was like, for me, it was felt very gossipy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was writing about more, um, I felt like I was writing for like a tabloid, like even though like the Philadelphia News kind of is a tabloid, but I was felt like I was doing more stuff about um, people's personal lives and not what they was doing on and on the court and off the field and all that kind of stuff like that. So that kind of affected me personally because I didn't really, that's just not my style. So came back to Columbus and had to figure it out, I had to figure it out. And uh, I, I started working at this like random like YMCA like just doing like, you know, just to have something to do because I was bored during the day. And this lady came up. She's like, hey, you're great with kids. I'm like, yo, I hate kids. Like, <laughs> I don't even like kids for real. Um, I just like DJing and in basketball. So I was doing this during the day. And uh, she's like, hey, I got a job for you. Come work for me at this place called Communities and Schools. Did that. Um, got the job. They threw me in and said, hey, create an after school program. I'm like, Reminder, I don't like kids, so I don't know what we want to do here. So created this after school program at Whitehall Yearling High School, ended up being like one of the top after school programs in the state for like two or three years in a row. We eventually lost our funding, but thank God, like I had a principal that was always in my ear, like, hey, you are good with kids. Go back to school, get your license and uh, like really do this thing. So I did that, went back, got a master's degree from Ashland, and then I started teaching. And they say, once you start an education, man, it's, it's hard to like, you, it's just like a bug, just like radio. It's just like a, a bug and you just attach to it. So, and that's what's been happening, man. Just the, the bug of education, you know, um, making impacts with high school kids or just kids in general. Um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, and I just wanted to get more out of it. I knew that the higher up I can go, the more impact I can make. Uh, which kind of led me to striving to get my administration license all while I'm still DJing and everything else. Like, cause it's what I love and uh, was able to do it. And I just landed this since the principal job back at Hannah. So I'm excited about, about what's next. So. Well, first and foremost, congratulations on your promotion and your new role. I'm excited to hear more about what you're going to accomplish over the, the next school year, because I know that, we are all in this transitional space of trying to, to figure out together, like what, what is everything gonna look like in education, in life? Um, piggybacking a little bit on um, you kind of talking about this transition and some of the challenges that you were facing. I know for a lot of our students specifically right now, um, culturally, socially, economically, politically, facing a ton of different obstacles, things that they couldn't have foreseen um, about a year and a half ago. So can you talk about some of the challenges or one challenge that you faced um, throughout your experience and what may have been like a significant lesson that you learned from that? I think for me, the biggest, the biggest thing is that, um, I mean, just obviously like the color of my skin, how, how, how I'm presented, like, obviously right now I'm talking to you in a, in a t-shirt and a, and a backwards hat because I'm in my environment, like, right. But I, I know how to adapt to other environments, but sometimes even we have to be careful with using the word adapt because then that means we're conforming to what is a, is a standard or a norm, but who creates that standard or norm, right. You know, so I feel like for me, the biggest thing was always like, yo, am I really, you know, um, am I being true to myself in whatever room that I walk in? So I always tell people, it's like, I, I can do the job regardless. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I really feel like every, every space that I'm in, I'm capable of doing the job and doing the job well. Um, one of the challenges that I've always ran into is that like, not everybody else thought that I could do the job based on how I came in, whether it was, I always get to get looked at or second guessed, especially in education, like, Oh, well, you look so young. I thought you was one of the kids. 
okay, great. I've been in education for 12 years now. Like I've heard that joke now, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> a million times, but it's cool. Like I, I, I take it as a compliment, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of learn to move through it. Um, or something that the likes of, um, I come in and I may be too aggressive or my energy doesn't match the mood of the room. I'm an energetic person. I talk loud. I got, this, this is what I do. Like, um, I challenge things a lot and I'm okay with that. Like, because if we don't challenge people like, but I don't want to be clear with this. Like I was challenging things before it came, became cool to challenge things. You understand what I'm saying? Like right now it's like, Oh, we hear you. We want to hear from like, y'all ain't want to always hear from us five, 10 years ago. So let's not act like that. That's always been a thing. But for me, sometimes that costs me opportunities and I recognize that, but I also recognize that if that cost me opportunity, that wasn't an opportunity for me. You know what I'm saying? So I, and I was okay with that. So those are some of the biggest challenges that you have to stand with who you are for yourself and, and be willing to miss out on some things because of who you are or what you really believe in. Ooh, that was, that was powerful. That was a word. Steve. <laughs> um, and I think that that's, you know, it's really important to have alum people who are very successful in their lives right now, share those experiences because, mm -hmm. you know, and thinking about how do I show up authentically in the spaces that I can have an influence on, especially when you're working in education, when you're working with students who are very impressionable and you're modeling certain behaviors and you want to be encouraging, you know, you have to be able to show up authentically in those spaces. Um, and I think that that's very powerful, and especially and I, with what we have going on right now. In, exactly. In and that's what I think, I think, I think how you, how you put that, it's like, like I, I told somebody the other day, they was like, man, you're excited. I said, I'm super excited about this new position. I said, but the biggest thing is that I want anybody to know is like, you know, especially like my kids, anybody who might watch it, like this position is bigger than me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's an opportunity for kids who look like me or I look like them vice versa to see themselves because many of our students will not even see like, so I have a, this, this passion of increasing the number of black males in education um, over the next few years, because mm -hmm. many of our young, like, you know, students won't even see their first black male teacher until high school and nine times out of 10, they're a coach. But like, we have to like in increase the interest of kids wanting to go into education in some type of way. It doesn't necessarily, I'm not saying that you have to be this, but majority of the time it's like, like we're losing teachers at a higher rate. A lot of school districts, their, their student population is not reflective in their staff population. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's going to continue to be this discrepancy because there's no cultural connection. And that's just not even a black white thing. That's all types of cultures that's, that's into it. So my focus is, is that is, is, is one of my biggest goals out of that, but uh, representation really, really matters. And that's just for me, it's not no buzzword type things that's going on just because that's what everybody's talking about over the last 18 months. Like this has always been my, my, my focus and my, my drive, like before it became popular to talk about that. Yes. I was just going to say representation definitely matters and it's not as you know quick or easy as posting it on your Instagram stories or, yeah. you know, making a sign like you really, you know, you live and you breathe and you do it on a day to day basis. So I really appreciate you stressing that, but coming to it from, you know, it's not just I'm sitting on a board or I'm, I'm in an executive space, but I'm in education. And this is the way, you know, we can have a true impact on the students who are striving for, you know, the next steps or the next good thing that's happening in their lives. Right. Um, I heard in this conversation with you just now, you talking about wanting to have that impact and caring so much about students. And I know from working with students in college that it, it can be it can be a lot, but it's definitely a passion. Um, and when you work in education, you, you, you're truly doing it because you love it. Mm -hmm. um, but you talked about wanting to have that impact on students. Um, so can you talk a little bit about mentors, um, heroes, individuals in your life who've had a great impact on you and maybe any you know, specific tips or 
advice that they've given you that's that's really stuck over the years? Yep. So so my biggest my my biggest hero in the world is my mom, first of all. Like she is my hero. Like she, man, she is a superhero, like <laughs> um raised like to raise six boys like on her own. And I just, you know, at times, you know, I watch her work three, four jobs, but you know, making, still making it to our games and, and all these things that like, she may not have stayed for the whole game. She might've popped in for a quarter at this one at my basketball day game and, and ran over to the other side of town for one of my brother's practices. And just, just the way she maneuvered and still was able to get it done. She's just a strong individual. So I think that's where a lot of my um, strength and like grind comes from just seeing her do it. Um, but in terms of like mentors, I feel like I have, um, I feel like I have a few solid mentors um, in, 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 in different walks of life. Um, one of my mentors would uh, be uh, Coach uh, Drew Williams. He's a head coach over at uh, Whitehall. And then also is, uh, I don't want to mess his title up, but like a huge engineer, like pretty much like the highest engineer in the city of Columbus. But um, I really look up to him. Like his advice is very, um, sometimes I get too excited. I'm like, yo, I'm going to do this, do this he always gives me a level like set like hey i'm not telling you can't but let's think about this let's do this let's you know what I'm saying, move like this so he always helps me out um in terms of that um i have some good uh mentors that i really rely on a lot of education um mr mark bobo miss uh, danita hampton like i always bounce ideas off of them and like hey am i moving right should i do this um you know what should be next you know because they they've experienced it and, and i and i trust their uh advice a lot um and then I, I ironically um a lot of like it's really your circle like my circle is like my two best friends like um e and freddie like i guess i don't know if you would call them a mentor but it's like that's like literally like we really like i really like hey guys this is what's about to happen what you think or that you know a lot of that is uh you know, people that's going to be in your ear that have the same um, drive as you, or you can look at them and say, okay, he just did this. Okay. Not that it's a competition, but it's like, okay, I like that. That, 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 that's motivating. They can push me and we push each other and stuff like that. So um, yeah. So I would say, I would say that in terms of like the people who I depend on. And then you, you asked me about like how to mentor or like what's, why is it important or I, you know, you can definitely share that. I was I was about to tell you that one of the things that you just talked about um, just now was peer mentorship. So a lot of times that when we think about the individuals who are in our, our sometimes we call it our board of directors, but it's just oh, yeah, to yeah, support yeah. us, um, like the individuals who are our circle, right? Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think about individuals who are in roles that we, you know, we aspire to be in. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of think about leadership in this positional way. And sometimes that's not necessarily how we should view it. And so I think it's really important to stress the fact that the people that you keep around you, your circle, your friends, um, your support system, those are individuals who can also mentor you because you talked about motivation. And that's one of the things that we do in our program is we want students to be around each other to continue to motivate each other to reach that next level, whatever that level may look like for them. And so it's always this like good hearted, uh, competitive nature of yep. I'm going to push you to get to the next thing that you, you want to get to. So I am uh, proud to hear you talk about your friends and how they serve in that capacity. But if you could also share as well, you know, how you mentor um, individuals as well, because I'm sure, I am sure <laughs> while you have mentors, there's people who see you as their mentor as well. Right. Yep. So, so it's funny. Uh, so yesterday I uh, spoke at this like youth uh, leadership uh, camp, just a small kind of camp that I like pop in on. <clears throat> and uh, one of the, one of the young ladies, she said, Hey King, how many kids you got? And so I said, so I said, well, legally I got four. She's like, what you mean legally? You got other kids somewhere? I was like, no, 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 no. Don't go start no rumors about me or nothing. So I like, but no, I, I said, I, I probably have about 4,000. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I probably have 4,000. Cause it's like, what I do is I really feel like, um, you know, between um, what I do in education, between cracking this mic on the radio daily, um, you do, you impact people and you mentor people without even knowing it sometimes. Sometimes uh, you are leading by example that you, you're under a microscope a little bit and you have to move a certain way 
to make sure that like you don't know who you are motivating right um from afar somebody that's watching you and be like man he he really got it or he did this but you know understanding that hey man i'm gonna make some mistakes too so don't look at me as like and you know or whatever but you can lean on me. So um, I have a lot of people that I mentor in terms of like some personal relationships. And the biggest thing that um, that that I provide for them is not a like, hey, do this, do this. I'm just more of an ear. Like, what do you need? Like, you know, what I'm saying? some of sometimes just like somebody to call and just vent somebody to be like, hey, I got this idea what you think or, hey, I'm ready to make this move. What do you think? What's your input? I'm not giving you the answer. I'm just you know what I'm saying? Just giving you some feedback on something or might be able to connect you with a resource or anything like that. So um, I've seen the mentoring piece come in full circle where, you know, now it makes me feel old, but like some of my first set of babies, like they're 30, 31 now, like, you know, it's like with master's degrees or doctors, I'm like, oh, like I, you was a senior when I first started. <laughs> like, why are you, why are you this old now? You know? So um but that always makes you feel good um, when you when you can come back and see it for a circle. And the biggest thing that I always tell people that like I, you know, from whether it's coaching a kid in basketball or a former student, or, King don't want nothing from you. I don't want anything from you. If you want to do anything, just pay it back. Just come back and be a mentor to somebody else. Take the next young person, a young young boy, young girl up under your wings and, and do the same thing because we we don't get anywhere in life by ourselves. Like, so once you start thinking that you did this on your own, you're destined for destruction because we have not done any of this. Like there was somebody who put you in a position or connected you with a resource or helped you get somewhere. You have to turn back and do the same thing. So I love hearing about your experiences. And as I was listening to you talk, I kept thinking about, you know, this this community that you have um, in education, um, the, this community that you've created amongst the students that you've worked with over the years. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I said at the beginning that I've had the pleasure of knowing you uh, for the last eight years. So I have a little bit more context. Um, and so we've talked about your career. We've talked about some of the things that you're doing right now, but I kind of want to like circle back to Akron really quick. Um, because as you were talking, this, this theme of community was just kind of bouncing in my head. I want you to talk a little bit about some of the community work that you've done in Akron mm -hmm. um, that I'm familiar with. So if you yeah. could share a little bit about um, the organization that you and some of your peers that you've mentioned here on the, during the interview uh, that you started back in Akron and some of the work that you've done there. Because I think that that's important too to, to share about how you pour sure. back into your community as well. Yep. So, so again, like, like I said, Akron is this huge city, man. So if you know, if you've ever been to Akron, you know how, how grand we are. So, <laughs> but no, um, so really it, um, we have, a, we have a nonprofit organization called the Young Black Professionals Coalition, um, short for YBPC, um, in which we are a community organization um, that, that just basically does a lot of giving back. Uh, we do back to school drives, we do food drives, we do uh, mentoring opportunities and, just all types of things in the community, connected resources. And the biggest thing it was that it all started from like a, uh, again, cause I, I DJ. So it was all my friends that was, I would DJ party, we were throwing parties and, and all that. So eventually you kind of grow and you, you know, you move it's like, okay, if we can get 500 to a thousand people or 2000 people to come to a party on a Friday, a quarter of these people got kids or probably getting ready, like, you know what I'm saying, that's in school, we could get at least half of these people to come to a community event uh, and play kickball in the park or have a free barbecue or give these people that's like, they probably spent this money to come to party with, but let's give them free haircuts. Let's give them book bags and stuff like that. So it kind of started off as a small ideal and it just kind of grew bigger. And then it almost became like, you know, cool to kind of give it back because again, like I said, like a lot of this stuff is just very trendy now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to have a nonprofit. It's cool to be a philanthropist and all that, which is great because we all need that in the world. So I'm, I'm glad that that is, you know what I'm saying, uh, at the forefront. Um, but for us in Akron, it was very important because of my, like myself, E, Freddie, um, we, we know that it is not easy to make it out. A lot of people looked at us as success stories, like, like you will go back home, be like, yo, I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all doing it in Columbus. You guys got it. Like, and it was almost like you had this weight on your shoulder that you had to finish 
Like you had, we had to, because if not, we would go back home and then we would not that we would be looked at as failures, but it was almost like, see, like y'all thought y'all was better. Like y'all went down there and y'all didn't like, so it was like, no, we got to finish. And then we, not only do we got to finish and move on to better things, we got to come back and make an impact in the community and, and kind of pour back in. Like, that's why I like that E is back in Akron working back at home. Like, you know what I'm saying? In the same high school that he graduated from, um, I kind of do things from afar, but I still have that connection that, that, I mean, a lot of people don't understand why LeBron is so attached to Akron. It's, it's, it's a magnet that you want to magnify and help your city grow. So that's, um, again, I just think it's an Akron connection, the Akron tie that you, that you want to do there. And I apologize for just kind of throwing that in there. No. <laughs> I, don't know Yo, I can talk about Akron for days. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think for me in, in meeting you and I, and I'll say, you know, I, I also know E and, and Fred and they're also Ohio State alum. I think one of the things that I always admired about all of you um, is your strong connection to your hometown and the efforts that you all made um, and your other peers and friends who are also from Akron, who you know have different ed- educational backgrounds, who've also been pouring into that as well. And so I just thought, you know, I didn't want to miss an opportunity of talking about all these great things that you're doing and not, you know, not highlight and draw attention to that as well. So we've we've talked about everything under the sun, right? We we've, we've talked about journalism, education, um, mentorship, you know entertainment, uh, how you show for your community, what's next? So you think about all these, you've had a very unique and creative experience so far. What's next for DJ Mr. King? You you know, uh, I I oftentimes find myself like wondering that. Um, One of the things that I do want to get better at is celebrating like small successes. Um, I think I move so fast and um, that a lot of times I don't recognize like, yo, I, I just accomplished this. And I didn't sit in that moment to appreciate what it was that I accomplished. Uh, because I'm, again, like I'll be on that grind mode so quick and I'm like, no, I want to go do this. Okay, cool, that's cool, that, but what's next? Like, so I, I, I really want to, for me, um, if I'm talking in terms of just um, short term, I really want to like lock in on this admin like the school administration. Um, I don't know, um, you know, I, I'm very up for the challenge, like for it, because it's, it's, it's something that I was able to get out of my comfort zone or what I was doing, but I really feel confident that I, I have some very great leaders I can learn uh, up under. I'm um, in my new principal, Jessica Williams, and, um, you know, uh, a couple of the other staff the members that's over there as well. So I'm super excited about that. Um, for me though, I, I long term, I just want to I just want to continue to make an impact. That's that's my biggest thing. Like, um, and you know whether that's you know becoming a principal, you know doing some things on a you know on an independent kind of side or just whatever it is. Like, I just want whatever that I'm doing is to be impactful. Like, I don't ever want to step away and. You know, no offense to anybody that has like, you know, a nine to five day job, like, you know, that's that I just know that's not my my thing. Like I can't sit still. So <laughs> so as long as I'm moving and being active, I'm good. Uh so but yeah, long I just I just just want to continue to have an impact. That's that's my biggest thing. Like so I I don't know where that leads. I just follow God's plan because I really thought like even before this. I just knew that I was going into something different. I'm like, I had this opportunity and I was mad that I didn't get it. And I had to really remove myself from it and be like, this ain't where God will be at. And I don't know what you got planned for me, God, but I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait. And I'm glad I did because it was an opportunity that that presented itself and, and I'm, I'm ready for it. So we're going to see where it leads, though. We're going to see where it leads. So. Well, I'm excited to see where it goes as well. Like I said, you you always have something creative and unique up your sleeve and you never <laughs> quite know. You never quite know what's next. So this is one of my favorite things because I'm always very curious about how people immerse themselves um, in different things and how they learn. So if you had one recommendation that you would offer to, to the Buckeye community that they should that they should check out, it could be book, it could be music, it can be podcast, it can be travel, any type of experience, what would that recommendation be? 
So if we're talking like books, so so I, I actually hold on, I, I can actually find it real quick. I think I got it on my bag. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is one that I like right here. It's called Focus. Um, and basically, like this book, it it really like it helps you on like your time management essentially. Like I think that we. You know, I know personally, like I move around so much and then it'd be like, oh, I have time for this. It's like, well, you did have time for it. But if you go look at your screen time, you was on Instagram for, you know, three hours a day. So, you know, did you not have time for it or did you feel like your combined time on Instagram throughout a 24 hour day was more important than whatever goal that you had set? So, you know, it was just a matter of but like, no, this book really like taps into like how to focus, how to compartmentalize how to move and navigate um different things so i really like that book um i am not a that's one of the books that i have that i can read and kind of move around but i'm more of a like audible like so if you are an active person like i i highly recommend getting the audible app and just kind of just listening to your books as you move around uh, you know what i'm saying or just having them playing in the background and things like that um musically i like everything i'm I'm that guy that's going, you come into my office, you might hear little Boosie playing. You might hear <laughs> Shirley Caesar playing. I don't know. Like, so <laughs> it depends on what day you catch me, but I am, I am very motivated by music. So um, I, I play everything. So music is obviously like the, uh, the heartbeat to my life. And then um, I would just say in terms of, you know, tr I would just say uh, open, open your mind to all types of experience. Don't, don't be, you know, don't just walk one path, like be willing to learn um, and uh, about uh, different different walks of life, about different people. Don't be afraid to have conversations. I'm a super people person. Like I can go up to in any room and make people uncomfortable by just talking to them. Like, <laughs> but I, I don't do it purposely. I just really be like, I just want to know. I just want to know your name or I just want to know something about you. And then you never know what that can lead to. It's just a conversation. I can't, I can't believe DJ Mr. King doesn't have a music recommendation. Everything. Oh, everything. Cause everything. I, because I know that a lot, you know, I don't, I don't want, uh, you know, no, no, go, go Google little Boosie then whoever listened to this, <laughs> go, go listen to set it off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's my musical record date recommendation <laughs> for you. Little Boosie set it off. <laughs> oh my, that is absolutely entertaining. Okay, so final words. What final piece of advice would you want to leave our Buckeyes with, if, if anything? Uh, my final piece of advice for uh, fellow Buckeyes and just anybody who's watching is just be you. Be true, be your authentic self in any room that you walk into. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, a lot of people may not accept that, but at the end of the day, you have to go home. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and make sure that was you 100% with yourself today. Um, and if you can, if you can look in the mirror and know that you put in 100% effort, you gave your 100% true self, you know, every, everything will work itself out. Again, I, I, you know, a lot of people want seats at tables and I don't want to sit down because I don't want to get comfortable. So I just put me in the room. Let's make some stuff happen and. Let's see where we go from there. But at the end of the day, be you, be real, be authentic, be your true self. All right. Well, you all heard it here first. Authenticity is the key. Steve, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, this was great. This is really fun for me. Um, it's not every day you get, you get an opportunity to in interview your friends. <laughs> um, so I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you again. And can you tell us all, because you are a mover and a shaker. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you are a people person mm -hmm. and you're kind of part of the entertainment industry. So can mm -hmm. you tell us all how we can stay and continue to be down with the king? Yep. So um, right now you can just follow me on, uh, I would just say Instagram is just uh, at DJ Mr. King. I am going to, uh, my principal wants me to make sure that I have me a, a professional and nice um, assistant principal page. So I'm going to make sure I do that um, here in the next couple of days. I just haven't figured out the name. I've always, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> had this page and like students follow it and all that. Um, so soon I'll have a, you know, a professional 
uh, principal page. But again, that ties into the point where it's all everything that I do is is related. I'm not afraid to say that I'm on the radio and I'm a DJ because I can cross promote certain things on there. I'm I'm okay with letting the entertainment world know that I'm a principal at a high school. I'm okay with letting students know or educators know that I'm a DJ on a radio. So, you know, I'll, I'll separate them for, for the purpose of, you know, having the two different, but you know, they, they all, I'm the same person. I don't have to come in and put on a costume to be DJ Mr. King or a costume to be Mr. King in the, in the, in the classroom or in a school building. So, yep. So DJ Mr. King, Google me, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you again, Steve, so much. We really appreciate it. And until next time, we shall see you all later. All right. Thank you.